Well, hello guys, here is Mr. G with another video. This time we're going to be starting with vectors and scalar for the grade tens. This is um, the beginning of mechanics and it's quite important and relevant for grade 11s and 12. At the end of this video, you should be able to know what is a vector, what is um, a scalar quantity, and most important, you will be able to see what are the difference between uh, vectors and scalar and you will be able to represent vectors graphically. So let's start by um, classifying physical quantities into vectors and scalar. It's very simple. All physical quantities, all of them, can be divided into groups, into vectors, and can also be divided into scalars, and they are different. Now, what are vectors? Vectors are those physical quantities that we have magnitude and direction those are vectors and then scalar quantities have um, or are those physical quantities that only has magnitude now in case of the uh, vectors having a magnitude and direction means that are those physical quantities that does not get well expressed if you don't mention the direction for instance when we're speaking about force it's a simple example when you speak about a force being applied on an object, it doesn't, wet, uh, it doesn't get well expressed if you say that the force is 5 newton only, right? Because you need to, to for this, for this um, physical quantity to get well expressed, you'll have to give a direction. It is being applied a force of 5 newton on a box to the right. For instance, now this... Um, this magnitude is well expressed and the same with other examples like weight velocity they are more and then some physical quantities that um, doesn't need a uh, direction at all or get well expressed without direction are those the um, scalar quantities for instance when we speak about mass when you speak about the mass of a person and you say it's 80 kilograms it doesn't need to give direction 80 kilograms is enough for the mass of any object okay now in the in the case of the vector there are there are um, some physical quantities that have a direction have magnitude but they are still scalar quantity for instance current current is an exception to a vector quant because current have a direction has a magnitude when you speak about current in electric circuit if we do that the real fast and you all did the electric circuit this one is a very very a short circuit for instance and then you know that current have a direction and it's flowing from one direction to another but this uh, current does not have uh, it is not effect it is a scalar quantity that is one exception it is a scalar quantity that is current okay so this is in terms of classifying um, physical quantities now let's go to vectors let's speak about vectors because that is the main purpose of this lesson here vector quantities are going to be represented with the letter the letter of the symbol of that specific physical quantity plus a small r pointing to the right on top of the symbol so if you study and you see any physical quantity with a a symbol on top, which is a small arrow, that means that that specific physical quantity is a vector. For instance, if we want to wait, which was one of the examples previously here, you go to this example of a um, weight here. If you want to represent weight, the symbol for weight is W. All right. So to know that this is a vector quantity, we have a small arrow pointing to the right on top of the W. That means that this physical quantity is a vector quantity. If you study um, a certain books from out of South Africa, which it may happen, then uh, it may be that they don't use the R on top, but they use the bold notation. So for instance, um, the bold notation will represent also a vector quantity, okay? But it is important that here in South Africa we are using the symbol of the specific physical quantity with the uh, R on top. Now, be careful because a uh, vectors has magnitude and direction, isn't it? We spoke about that just now. Magnitude 
and direction. So if you see certain physical quantity like W, which is the example we just used, and you only see the symbol without the R on top, then we are referring to the magnitude of that physical quantity. For example, let's say that weight is equal to 5 Newton. It means that this direction is not taken into consideration. We are only referring to the magnitude of that physical quantity, even though it is a vector quantity. So this is quite important, guys. Now, in terms of representing graphically the vector quantities. Now, when we're representing vector quantities graphically, we're going to use an arrow in which the head of the arrow, as is indicated here, will give you the direction of the physical quantity. That is quite important. And then the length of the arrow. When you measure the length of the tail of the arrow to the head of the arrow, that will give you the magnitude of the vector. So that one is important to have in mind. Now, when you drawing a vector or you representing a vector graphically, you need to have a scale. You need a scale so you can represent the magnitude of those uh, of that physical quantity using a uh, arrow. For example, let's use a simple example on this side here, and let's say you have to represent graphically a vector. Let's write here example there. And let's say you have to represent a vector which is a force equal to a 20 Newton to the right. This is a 2, not the 20, 20 Newton to the right. To the right. There is the direction given for that physical quantities and then you have to uh, represent graphically that 20 newtons to the right the first thing you have to do is to get a scale now the scale can be done by you but sometime is going to be given by your teacher and then you have to respect the scale that you're using remember you have to convert this one into centimeters so you can have it or represent it in your notebook so let's say for instance we are going to say that five newton will be represented or equivalent to one centimeter so we can draw it actually accurately in the um, book so now if we do that we say 20 newton is how many centimeters and here you need to do a cross product there so you know how many centimeters will be a 20 newton guys this is a really easy example in this case x is going to be equal to um, four centimeters so the vector which we are going to draw that represent the 20 newton is going to be four centimeters to the right according to the drawing so if we come here we take a ruler you need the ruler for this one guys and you're going to start from that side you are going to draw make sure you have four centimeters in the right direction in this case we're using the right now the head let me erase that the head be careful i have seen many times people measuring three centimeters here i'm going to write three centimeters but then they add a head on top and then that will become longer than a three centimeters so instead from the point you measure exactly the three centimeters we're going to go a little bit back and that will not take any space from the actually measurement so this vector here is represented or is a force equal to 20 newton you write you can write here to the right so this is the graphical representation of that specific um, vector that we represent which is 20 newton to the right guys i hope you understand it really really easy now let's go to speak about direction there are different ways of giving direction of vectors and the first one we're going to speak is about the relative direction now when we speak about the relative direction we say in left right up or down 
we cannot convert or, or, or confuse the relative direction with, for instance, north. North and up are not the same thing. They're different. When you use north, for instance, you are using the compass direction in which you have here a compass. You all did work with a compass and you all know exactly how to work with compass. You know, you see it. And this one is the compass, the cardinal point of the earth. Do not confuse up with north because they are not exactly the same thing okay so now here if we go there for instance how to represent this direction of the 40 degree in this case you can see that it's 40 degree from west moving towards the north that's why we say that this one is 40 degrees north of west guys this is quite simple all you have to do let me change that a color i don't like it there I think it's now better. There we go. 40 Newton force of west. This is how to give a direction using the compass way. And please do not confuse compass with the relative um, direction. And the final one we're going to be doing and to just finish this uh, little video is to use the bearing. Now bearing, guys, we are going to do it differently. We, you, you do this one in geography, but I think it's slightly different here. Now the first thing is that we are going to count always clockwise with respect of or to north. And bearing is always written as a three digital numbers. For instance, this one is 110 on bearing. So you have to say on bearing. So we know what um, direction are you using. But for instance, you need to know that when you using bearing for direction, we are going to count in the clockwise direction always, starting from north. So this one is the starting point, and then you are going to be moving clockwise as you go to look for the direction there. And this is also in three digits. For instance, this one will be zero, zero, zero degree, on bearing that is important to be given so any point or any angle you have let's for example do the axis here so you get an idea you have the axis so you're going to use the axis but you're going to represent it using bearing if you have an angle that is here for example a vector pointing in that direction there how are we going to say if this one is a 45 degree we say 0 45 degree on bearing because we're using the bearing notation guys this is the end of the video i hope it helped if it did help please uh, thumb up subscribe for the channel i'll see you next time next time we're going to be speaking about properties of vectors we're going to be maybe learning how to add vectors and so on thank you for watching i'll see you next time mr g here